You know, on this channel, we talk a lot about issues relating to crime. We talk a lot about bad neighborhoods. We talk a lot about the importance of fathers. And we talk a lot about personal responsibility and how the onus, for the most part, is on you to do right by yourself and do right by your family. However, I'm not unsympathetic to some of the responses I've gotten from black Americans. Because a lot of the times, you can do all of the right things. You could take every step that is recommended that 9 times out of 10 will definitely work and still end up in a terrible situation, still have a horrific tragedy, all because our institutions failed you and you ultimately were set up for that failure. And the story that we're going to talk about today is the story of a father and a son, and the father did everything right in this case, and it breaks my heart that his 14-year-old son was killed in Harlem due to the fact that the city of New York abandoned him, abandoned his family, and abandoned the neighborhoods that they need to be policing. Now look, this video is in fact sponsored, so we are going to go into the ad transition, but you'll definitely want to come back on the other side to hear the story of Justin Schreeder. Electric bills are up this summer. I know you're all aware of what's going on in the oil market, but that also affects every other aspect of the energy sector. And in a summer this hot, you definitely need a way to cool yourself while not breaking the bank. You don't need to be paying the double electricity bills that many people in many major cities are paying. So go over to easysummercool.com and get yourself one of these four in one mini air conditioners. I keep mine right by my bed at night and on my desk in order to supplement my cooling. And based on tips from you guys out there in the audience, I use it especially in those hot days that aren't so humid based on the way that it works. So again, go to EasySummerCool.com. You can get it for a 50% discount. That's EasySummerCool.com. So a couple of days ago, I caught wind of a local news story out of the city of New York. You guys know I'm based over here about two young boys that were shot and wounded at the time. One was shot in the head and the other was shot in the leg. Now, the 15-year-old, I think, is fine. He's already been released from the hospital, expected to make a full recovery. But at the time, the 14-year-old was reportedly alive, fighting for his life in the hospital in critical condition. But unfortunately, he ultimately ended up passing away. And while this could be just a regular story out of the city of New York, it could just be another shooting in Harlem, another shooting in a bad neighborhood. In reality, there's so much more to this story because I caught wind of an interview that his father gave to CBS Local. And honestly... It's just horrible. He was a child just going to the store with his best friend. And they took my son from me. So obviously, you can see the pain of a father who just lost his son as he was going to the store. It turns out his kid was actually back in this neighborhood visiting his grandmother, and he decided to go for a walk with one of his best friends or his best friend, and this ultimately ended up happening. And when you get into the motivation and what actually was behind the shooting, it gets even worse because there is nothing good about this story. But one of the things that I found a little bit odd up until the next second of the segment was that they conducted this interview with him sitting in the car. However, there's a devastating reason on why he's sitting in that car. Through the tears, Damon Streeter told us he couldn't help but sit across the street from the sidewalk where his son was murdered the day before, processing unimaginable grief. I couldn't leave, I couldn't leave to go home without my son. Look, I don't consider myself a particularly emotional guy or anything like that. I like to cover these stories from an analytical perspective so I can give you the matter of law and talk about what should be done in terms of policy. But this clip really got to me. The fact that he says that he can't leave the sidewalk where his son was murdered because he doesn't want to go home without him. There's no response to that. And what's even worse is I know that this story gets significantly worse. 14-year-old Justin Streeter, seen here at his middle school graduation earlier this year, was with his 15-year-old best friend on East 128th Street in East Harlem Tuesday. As they left a deli, a gunman approached and started firing. Both boys were hit by the gunfire. The 15-year-old shot in the leg survived, but Justin, shot in the head, was pronounced dead at Harlem Hospital. Police sources say the victims had no gang affiliations and the motive for that shooting is not clear. Investigators have not ruled out a case of mistaken identity. So this report is actually a little bit old. They did in fact capture a 17 year old who was behind the shooting. He turned himself in with his mother the other day and it appears right now that we still don't have a motivation for this and as the reporter said in that segment and I don't know if this was released in a different news segment but let me just mention it now. There's no gang affiliations or anything like that for the victims in this case and the police are really possibly examining the fact that this might have been a target 
targeted situation with a mistaken identity. So this kid just randomly was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it ended up costing him his life. I don't know what to feel, but I know my son is in a better place right now. And I want justice. Justice. Damon Streeter said he moved the family to this home in Plainfield, New Jersey, two years ago to get his kids away from all the violence in the city. So here you have the father explaining to the local news crew that in 2020, when the restrictions and the rules for criminals were all loosened and crime started to get bad, he was proactive and he actually got both of his sons out of their neighborhood and moved them to a house in New Jersey in order to avoid this very thing. And unfortunately, his kid was visiting his grandmother in this area, which, by the way, I have family members that have done this. My uncle and my aunt, my uncle's mother, actually lived in this particular area or nearby enough, and it was a bad that area but they moved out and we would go into these areas and they would always be cautious with us in these areas because they were high crime areas then and they're becoming high crime areas again now but yeah it's just heartbreaking this guy did all the right things he took all the right steps he noticed the trend and he acted as a father to protect his kids and it ended up turning out like this he did everything right in this scenario and he feels like a failure and there's really nothing you can say to him because he's missing a son. Justin was back in Harlem visiting his grandparents when he was killed. I feel, I feel. Why do you feel that way? Because the same thing I, I got him away from is what took his life. Look, he did not fail. I'm sorry, but I'm not accepting that as an answer. He did everything right in this situation. He saw where things were trending in his community, and he decided to relocate his family, get his kid out of harm's way in order to give him a better life, a better opportunity. That's what you expect of a father. That is the honorable thing for a father to do. The people that failed are Mayor Eric Adams and New York City's government. Adams ran on bringing back stop and frisk. Adams ran on reinstituting the anti-crime unit to target get all the illegal guns in New York City and as mayor he's proven to be just as soft on crime as Bill de Blasio and considering we have a worse district attorney now than during most of the period of time under de Blasio a lot of these effects are only going to get worse I've often talked about how pre the whole George Floyd thing there was under 300 murders in the city of New York it immediately jumped to around 450 and that was 150 extra people that didn't need to die but we decided to change up policing based on an instance that happened in Minneapolis, even though that was already banned in the city of New York. This is the consequence of going soft on crime. This is the consequence of revolving your entire criminal justice strategy around the nine allegedly unarmed black people that are killed in this country a year. A good man, a good father who did everything right, loses his son anyway because the police are slacking off, because the mayor is slacking off. Because wealthy progressives who never actually have to interact with crime, who never have to actually interact with the victims of crime, think that they know better and they need to remove the police in those neighborhoods because the real problem in the situation is the police. This 17-year-old, the person who shot and killed this man's son, should have never been able to approach him in the first place. This is an area with high spikes in shootings. Typically, what the NYPD would do in response to this is surge policing and they would implement policies like targeted stop and frisk in order to deter people from carrying guns in the first place so it could never escalate to this point. Justin Streeter deserves better. Damon Streeter for damn sure deserves better. And honestly, black citizens in these major cities also deserve better. They deserve better than politicians who'd rather cater to the feelings of criminals and activists who have no association with these neighborhoods than the people who actually are victimized by crimes in these neighborhoods. Meanwhile, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, joined by several of his counterparts from across the country held a summit at Gracie Mansion Wednesday targeting the gun industry. Nine billion dollar industry of gun manufacturers who have made a decision they're going to put profit over our public safety. And to give you an idea about how far off from the issue the government of New York City actually is, Mayor Adams was already set to have a gun summit in order to deal with the problems associated with shootings in the city of New York. Now, they didn't address bringing back all the tools that they had gotten rid of that were preventing these shootings from happening in the first place in the city of New York. The mayors agreed to begin pooling illegal gun information into a database to identify who made each weapon. Instead, they focused on a database which would document the manufacturers of the firearms for a potential political stunt where Mayor Adams in the future, on behalf of New York City, 
could sue the gun manufacturers. This guy ran on stop and frisk and bringing back the anti-crime unit, and this is what he's doing with this time. He's setting himself up for a gubernatorial race in the future, while murders are skyrocketing in the city of New York, while shootings are getting out of hand. I think all of us on this channel can agree that family is the hugest portion of it, plus community and a good support system is probably 80% of it, but that doesn't mean that the 20%, the institutions, can just take a siesta because all of a sudden progressive nonsense about how criminals are just Aladdins and actually the real victims of society has taken hold. We need to go back to what works. We need to do it now. We needed to do it yesterday, and it's an outrage for me to watch mayor eric adams run from location to location whenever there's one of these instances and never actually do anything about it never actually implement change just trot out his police commissioner to talk about how sad they are when they know what policies would work they know what neighborhoods to target they just refuse to do it they don't have the political will to do it and there's a district attorney that's fully fine with releasing all these scumbags back on the streets to victimize innocent people over and over again look those are my thoughts you guys know the drill like comment share subscribe whatever whatever you know the drill you know all the things the links are where they are and all that till next time